Hello and welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show that looks at the highs and the lows from around world football this weekend. As you can probably tell, Patrick Van Straten is back, he's in the hot seat. Pato, where are we starting, mate? We have to start with Mauricio Pochettino Spurs, who took a 2-0 win off Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. It was very, very impressive, wasn't it, Jack? What a performance. Of course, Pochettino started his managerial career against Barcelona all the way back in 2009 with Espanyol, managed to nick a one-all draw there. And he went one stage better on the weekend, getting the 2-0 victory. Here's a great stat for you. Spurs are still yet to concede a goal, in the Premier League at least, from open play. That is amazing. Wow. That really sums up how good they've been this season. And they just keep covering, uh, keep covering ground, don't they? On the weekend, they pressed City so much. City were panicking at the back. They looked a little bit muddled. And in fact... This is how fit Tottenham Hotspur were. Seven of the players that started on the weekend have actually started three games in the last eight days. And yet they still covered the most amount of ground on the weekend that they had any game this season. That's how fit this team is under Pochettino and Pato. They're missing some key players, weren't they? Well, yeah, you talk about how fit they are, but they're also now a deep squad yeah. too. They're missing Harry Kane, Moussa Dembele, Eric Dyer. These are perhaps the three players who we think might be their most irreplaceable. And actually, Victor Wanyama came in for Eric Dyer and was truly fantastic on the day. Now, we know he's a physical presence, but in this game, he made six successful tackles. He had an 84% pass accuracy. He recovered the ball on nine occasions Whoa. and he threw in an interception and they just couldn't live with him. Fernandinho didn't have his best game. Gundogan isn't quite ready to start three yeah. games in a week. And they Spurs just overran them in midfield. They now have taken more points from these first seven games than they ever have at this stage of a Premier League season. They're on 17 points, one point behind City and one point ahead of Arsenal. It's very exciting Yes, Spurs. indeed. They're still unbeaten as well. Very exciting. But where can they expect to finish the season? Should they be challenged for, for another title or is it top four for Tottenham? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our first losers, of course, come from the same game, Pato. It's Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. What went wrong on the weekend, do you think? Well, this was actually the first time that Manchester City had gone behind in the league. And once they were behind, they struggled to get back into it. The lead quickly became 2-0, uh, thanks to a really horrendous defensive kind of mix-up from City's back line. They yeah. all switched off. Deli Alley pretty much walked in. This looked like the perfect game for Ilkay Gundogan. Yeah. You think when you're pressing, when you're facing a pressing team, you want a guy who can wriggle out of pressure with dribbling, who's a good passer, and who also puts up big defensive numbers. Gundogan is that guy. But one of our followers, who goes by the Ginger Pele on Twitter, pointed out to me that, of course, coming off the back of this serious knee injury that he's had, starting three games in a week might have been a bit much for the German. And as a result, City was stuck with Fernando in midfield, who just didn't have the guile to get the ball into their attackers. Yeah, they also miss Kevin De Bruyne, of course, their key creator. In fact, mm. in 2016, they've lost six games all six of those Kevin De Bruyne has also missed. That shows how pivotal he is to this team. They were also missing as well Vincent Kompany, of course. No surprise there. The man has terrible calves, we know. However, he is still pivotal to that back line. If they can get 20 games out of, this, this, out of him this season, they've done very, very well. That back line, like you mentioned, looked extremely shaky. Zavaleta seems to have aged about 10 years overnight. Yeah. Kolarov scored the own goal. Claudio Bravo looks a bag of nerves. And there's so much pressure on John Stones at the back alongside Otamendi, who, by the way, Definitely should have been sent off on the weekend. It's incredible. John Stones is the pivotal man in that back four already, and he's still so young. But Pato, it's not going to affect him too much, is it? We're still expecting them to be right up there at the end of the season. Well, as we said, they've been, they're missing some guys. It's a tough away yeah. game for them, but they're still top of the league by a point, and they still have the best goal difference in the league. So we think they're still going to win the league, but what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Back to the winners category and it's Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very jubilant scenes from the Argentinian manager on the weekend, giving it a bit of this after beating Valencia 2-0 to send his side to the top of La Liga. They're still unbeaten in all competitions as well and they've played Bayern Munich, they've played Barcelona, so a fantastic start to the season. This could be, well be as well the year that they win the league again. Of course, Barcelona lost on the weekend. Real Madrid struggled to another draw at home against Ibar. 
far. So not great scenes for either of those two teams. However, Diego Simeone's side, both at the back and going forward, just keep powering on Pato. Yes, they were very, very good at both ends of the pitch. Their defence, we know, is extremely good. And in this game, Valencia didn't have an attempt on goal until the 37th minute. But it's at the other end that things are truly encouraging. They're never really going to be able to hang with Real Madrid or Barcelona's attack. But Kevin Gamero has arrived and settled instantly. He's assisted three of Antoine Griezmann's six La Liga goals so far this season. He also might well find himself taking penalties soon because Gamero has scored nine out of ten in La Liga, whereas Griezmann has missed three out of four in La Liga. And he missed another one in this game before Gabby took a second penalty and missed it too. Unfortunately, they were up against Diego Alves, who is perhaps the best penalty stopper in the world. If you want to hear more about the Brazilian and his incredible game this weekend, he faced 10 shots on target and only conceded two. It's not bad. Then head over to Euro Roundup where we do a more in-depth dive on the Valencia keeper. Our next losers come from Catalonia, Pato, and would you believe it, it's Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona took a trip to Galicia this week and faced off against Celta Vigo where they lost 4-3. They were 3-0 down at half-time. They haven't experienced that in the league since 2009. Iago Aspas absolutely tore through them. Look, they deserve to lose this game. Celta had 14 shots to Barcelona's 13, but while Barca produced four shots on target, Celta produced nine. Wow. Nine shots on target. It was truly impressive. And actually, a similar thing happened last year. Last year, Barcelona went away to Celta Vigo, and that time they lost 4-1. That was actually the last time that Ter Stegen conceded four. They lost Nolito in the summer, but Celta Vigo are flying once again. Very impressive stuff for them. Very impressive indeed. However, Barcelona were, of course, missing Lionel Messi, their talisman. Since 2011, Lionel Messi has missed 52 games. Barcelona have actually lost 11 of them. That's a ridiculously high number for Barcelona. And they were backed up, of course, by Jerry, Jeremy Mathieu's absolute turd of a performance, aka the Richard Dunn of La Liga. Since he's joined the club, nobody has scored more own goals than Jeremy Mathieu, unsurprising. But Barcelona, they've started the season so badly. It's their worst start to a season since 2005, 2006. They've taken 13 points from seven games. That's unacceptable. They sit in fourth in the league. However, in 2005, 2006, they still finished as champions. But are they going to do it this year? Atletico started the season well, so have Real Madrid. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Oh, our final winners of the week are Arsenal. What a team they are. They won a fifth Premier League game on the bounce and it was thanks to an absolutely hilarious 92nd minute winner. Look, they hadn't been particularly good in this game. I think that we dominated the game without actually creating any particularly good chances. Um, and I think Burnley were happy to let us have most of the ball because they were perfectly content sitting in that deep block. But right at the death, went to sleep. There was a final corner. It came back out to Alexis Sanchez. He swung it in. Theo Walcott, of all people, got the knockdown. And Laurent Koscielny booted it into his own hands and face and bundled it over the line. What a goal it was. It was illegal in so many different ways. And it was really, really funny because Burnley were having a great day up until then. They were cheering everything that we missed and they lost and they're going to get relegated. <laughs> As you can tell, Patrick enjoyed it and so did Arsene Wenger. What a great way to celebrate his 20th anniversary at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. However, Santi Cazorla, I'm going to have to pick him out as a key player here. 98% pass accuracy, fantastic on the day, alongside Granit Xhaka in that midfield. He looked great again, created two chances. But the main man, Arsenal's key man at the moment, Theo Walcott. What a start people. to the season he's had. He looks reborn in 2016-17. I don't know what's happened to him. We're talking about Raheem Sterling being reborn and rejuvenated under Pep. What the hell has Arsene <laughs> Wenger been feeding to Theo Walcott? In this game, he had five shots, got one assist, two successful tackles, two key passes. He's great all over the park. He scored two midweek as well. That was a fantastic game against Basel. So, Theo Walcott could well be their key man. Although Arsenal... I have to say, I thought you missed Olivier Giroud quite badly in this game. That deep block you talked about, sometimes Arsenal struggle to play through a deep block. Giroud yeah. really, really gets them out of that situation because they can swing crosses in. Giroud is really good in the air. I thought they missed him in this game, Petter. They really did. And I, felt a li I do actually feel a little bit sorry for Burnley because they were tough. They were resilient. They've actually only conceded five goals in their last 17 home games, Ooh. which is unbelievable. And they haven't conceded more than one in any of those matches. Admittedly, most of those were in the championship, but that's still a tough league yeah. and it's still pretty impressive. 
But I will say that Sean Dyche, you need to sort that goatee out, mate, because it's an absolute disgrace. <laughs> and also the sideburns, have a look at those. There's no excuse for a goatee in this day and age. Especially not a ginger one. Oh my God. Our final loser is the biggest result of the weekend. Hold the back pages, this is a monster. Atalanta won, Napoli nil. Jesus Christ, shocking scenes for Napoli. <laughs> Can't believe they've lost it straight in our losers category, despite having 66% possession, 1-0, 66% possession. They also had 13 shots <laughs> and didn't score a goal. However, they did struggle to get shots on target. Had just three shots on target to Atalanta's four. And that surprised me, actually. Arcadius Milik has started the season really well. Four goals in his first four games, but struggled to find the target on the weekend, Pato. Yeah, he only had two shots in this game. But look, Atalanta performed really, really well. We thought they were going to be relegation battlers at the beginning of the season, and they may still well be. But they're now up to 12th place. They've got nine points. This is an unexpected three points that really could make the difference come the end of the season. And they did have a slight advantage in this game because Napoli were missing Vlad Kirikes and Raul Albion. So their backline was a little bit shot. But now Napoli might be falling a little bit behind in the title race. They might indeed. Of course, Juve picked up another three points in the weekend. So now Napoli are four points off the pace and just one point ahead of the likes of AC Milan. So it's going to be a tight one in Serie A. But could this result cost Napoli come the end of the season? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So those are the biggest winners and the biggest losers, in our opinion, from the weekend. But who did you think missed out? Let us know in the comments below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to head over to Euro Football Daily and check out Euro Roundup for a deeper dive into some of the results from around the continent. And as always, guys, please do like and subscribe. Catch you next time.